the startup doesn't always go as well as you think it's going to go and it took a lot longer and um to a point where we were at a point financially where we just weren't actually being able to pay out our own home and was going to be able to need to sell our home so my husband said to me louise you've got to find more work i was always working but always working for somebody else and he just said you've got to start finding something because we basically going to be losing our house. We've got no income at the moment for two years going. And so started calling around, trying to see if I can do extra hours. Nobody opened the opportunity. And it was at the time when Brian was talking about what's in your hand. And um, I've got a deaf sister. And so my sister randomly contacted me um, to just ask if I wouldn't do occupational therapy assessments under the deaf community. At first I was like, no, I mean, it doesn't, that, that support or that area doesn't actually even exist. I mean, they know therapists that really specialize in the deaf community because nobody really knows the language. So I, I use Auslan. Um, and I was just like, no, I, I can't do that. I'm, I'm not a business person. This is like just too much for me. But when the finances really get pushing and <laughs> really don't have a choice, I decided, okay, well, I'll, I'll just step out of my boat and, and try and do this on the side. And um, yeah, by by God's grace, um, three years later, I've got almost 17 staff working for me. Um, and God's super increased. We've, we've actually been able to move to a new home um, that's um, to get extra office space. This is our office, and that's what Dan's been helping us with. Um, so it's just been such a miracle story. It, it's really um, a lot more detail involved and stuff, but I guess the biggest thing was just always as a woman thinking, there's no way, you know, my husband's the one It's following his career, you know, I'm going to be the supportive one. And to actually see that, that God actually called me to business as well. Um, and now my husband's business is starting to, to work out. But I think God took us through that season of actually not being able to depend on his to kind of push me into our direction. So yeah, it's a great story. So thanks, Dan. Um, oh, the, the house, the, the miracle story is when we moved, Tian actually looked at the house on a satellite picture just to look at location because time is my biggest commodity, commodity at the moment, the most expensive one. So I just wanted to be close to the school so I could actually win eight hours a, day, a week, you know, of not having to do the drop off and stuff. And he saw the house on a satellite and he said, oh, that would be our dream house, you know, that location, you know, that's just perfect. And when we knew we had to move, but we didn't have a house or anything. And then the day, two, three days before our house that we put on the market was going to go to auction, um, this house came as a private sale. It wasn't on the market or anything, the exact house that we looked on a satellite. We didn't even know what it looked like. And we sold and bought our house within four hours apart on the same day. So, I mean, how's that not for a miracle? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks, Dan. Thanks, Louise. And look, you, you've been very gracious and respectful of time there, but there, there are just so many details right across your guys' story that is just amazing. And uh, honestly, it just speaks to your faithfulness and your commitment. I mean, you're incredibly, you guys are incredibly generous. You're a great part of our church. You just epitomise what it means to just keep stepping out in faith. So, uh, yeah, of 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 love just knowing you guys and your story and thanks for sharing a little bit with us it's uh it's really cool so definitely inspires me to keep uh just keep stepping out believing god for more so and definitely praying for you both as you just, just just keep moving forward in business it's cool i think i actually met you guys at the northern beaches campus a few years ago tiana just stepped out and started that business which um which was cool yeah and we said that our dream was always to move closer to the northern beaches Little did we know we'd be able to do it four years later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I actually remember having that chat with you. And now, yeah, now you're on the beaches. You're officially beaches people. Wow. That's <laughs> uh, awesome. All right. Uh, so, yeah, welcome. Sorry, I didn't give a formal welcome before. I was a little frazzled this morning. Internet was playing up. Zoom wasn't working for me. And uh, I get no reception at my house. I was thinking, oh, I'm going to have to get in the car and drive up the road to get some 4G and jump on my phone or something. And anyway, ended up rebooting everything, modem and 
computer and got it all working. So officially welcome to everyone. Really nice to see you. Um, look, I tell you what, whatever Pete Lowe is going to bring this morning, uh, someone wasn't wanting him to bring it. So it, uh, it's, it was all the opposition. But uh, Pete, Pete shared with us before and I uh, asked Pete to share with us again a couple of reasons just because Pete is just an absolute blessing in this space um, to people in our church and beyond. Uh, Pete's really essentially committed his life to helping people in business find their purpose, find their meaning in business, move forward in their business. Um, I think we're just blessed to have someone like this in our community, in our church. And um, yeah, I'm actually going to be going and attending one of, I know when I started my business a few years ago, I attended a couple of Pete's um, 100x events and I've, I've told him he's got permission just to speak about what he does there and um everything like that obviously um yeah anyway but i attended it was so helpful for me it was genuinely so helpful i know it's been i know a lot of people particularly business owners but not just business owners if you're work, if you're a career focused person i think what pete has to offer is great but i know some of the things he does are specifically for business owners is awesome for me pete uh we really really excited mate appreciate you and Thanks for thanks in advance for coming this morning. I might hand over to you and uh, mm, yeah, awesome. maybe could welcome him on the chat, give him a bit of encouragement as he goes. Yeah. But yeah, we love you, mate. Thank you. Love you, mate. Hey, thanks, Dan, and thanks for everyone that helps coordinate to bring this together. And Lu Louise, when you're sharing your story, I'm standing and I've got tingles. Um, it's awesome. I'm glad you're on the northern beaches. I spent a bit of time here, so looking forward to meeting you. And um, I think that's what happens, right? When we share these stories, I think we all get a bit of a tingle and we all like want to cheer because um, it's an example of what it means to be anointed for business. Like everyone on this call, we're doing a, a business connect and the part that we play in the body of Christ is no more, but also no less important than uh, what else goes on here. And we all have an, uh, just a, a specific part to play in the body of Christ. And I love that passage where God says he's determined the exact times and places for us. And he also says that in him, we move and live and have our being. And so by divine appointment, um, this is not a normal 24 hours. No day is a normal 24 hours. It's not a plotting on of 24 hours, but it's a day filled with divine opportunities. And as part of that, if you're on the call today, then I believe that like anything, God's going to speak. Um, I want to assure you that what I shared today, that I want to bring my best. Um, I haven't just rolled out of, the, out of bed and gone, what do I do? I've been praying about this. I've been wrestling with this and I've been working on this. And my absolute commitment today is to bring the best to you. Um, but it comes with a catch. And what I ask as we kick off today is that uh, you bring your best, that you actively uh, listen uh, maybe the encouragement is going to come up through the chat window or maybe that someone else might share today. Um, but to bring your best, to have your uh, ears open. Uh, an old business mentor shared with me that the opportunity of a lifetime happens every day. Do you have the eyes to see it, the hands to catch it and the heart to hold it? And uh, whatever happens today, that there will be a divine opportunity here and that sometimes it's not all the bad things that happen in life that are coming against us but are being here to help build us into something more uh, at the end of this call i guess i'm going to uh, politely push for two things i'm going to ask two questions and that is what is the one thing that you're committed to changing yourself and the second question is who's the one person that you can talk to that can that can help you grow there I want to do this by just sharing three principles and they're not the only three principles and it's not a blueprint, but three principles uh, in leadership that I think are helpful. And with that, I'm going to share with you three testimonies, three stories of how this applied. And the reason why we tell the stories is because so often in life we hear a principle and we self-qualify out. We say, well, that's not for me because of X, Y, Z. But when you can hear a story about someone who's just like you, who has the same fears and insecurities as you, then maybe you might go, well, maybe what was possible for them could be possible for me. And so that's why I want to just um, share those stories. So if that's okay, 
that's what I'd love to do. Uh, I want to share a framework, and this framework actually um, was first um, shown to me by a good friend of mine called Taki Moore, and I really enjoyed this framework, and it's something I, it's one of the things that I use today just to kind of set some context in terms of why you, when it comes to you and who you are, why it's so important when it comes to the context of business. Um, so we start with you and the things that we need to be doing in business. We need to attract. We need to convert. We need to deliver. And we need to scale. If the left-hand side of this graph represents what happens when we get it wrong, and the right-hand side of this diagram represents what it looks like when we get it right, if we don't get you right, we're empty. But if we've got you right, we've got energy. And a quick poll to think about in terms of why this is important. If I was to ask you within the last kind of one month, and just quickly fire that in the chat window, what would be the energy levels that you've personally had out of 10? Would you rate yourself a level six, a level seven, a level eight, maybe a level four? Where do you think your energy levels are when it comes to personal energy? Just fire that in the chat. The second question, when you think about your level of influence, what's the energy level that you're giving your team? Do you feel like you're giving them a 10, a nine, an eight? What's the energy level that you're giving your team? Awesome. So now a personal reflection. Think about the two numbers that you've given. If you've given a number, if, you're, if you feel like you're giving 10 to your team, but you're a level eight, I wanna probably suggest to you it's, it's not true. And if it is true, it's not gonna be true for a long time because you can't give out more than what you've got for a long term, right? So as leaders, if we're at an energy level nine, we need to understand that the people around us are gonna be at best an eight and maybe a seven. And that if you're consistently showing up and you're feeling like you're giving out a 10 and you're feeling like an eight, well, of course, that's why it's going to lead to empty on the gauge. And the other thing is you've got, if you've got someone consistently in your team that has a higher energy level than you, they're going to eventually leave. There's a reason why there's a saying that people don't leave jobs, they leave managers. It's because we need people that are going to take us to another level. Second one, attract. If we don't attract, we're unknown. No one knows us. We're the world's best kept secret. It's like my mum's dumpling recipe. You guys don't know it, but it is epic. I used to, hey, true story. At high school, I used to take my dumplings to school and everyone would go, you know, like Asian food wasn't big in the 80s, but it would be like, what is that? And everyone would curl up their noses and then they'd eat a dumpling. And then I kid you not, I had people queuing up to eat my mum's dumplings and they'd pay me money. And then I'd go and do what everyone else does and buy a hamburger. But attract, we need to attract. If we don't, we're unknown. But if we can attract, we've got an audience. Then what do we do once we've got that audience? If we can't convert them to a client and we're not trying to convert everybody, we're not, we, we, whatever businesses and influences we've got, we, not everyone is a client of ours or in our circle of influence when we, you know, whether it's business or something else. So if you can't convert, they remain a connection and that's not a bad thing. But if you can convert, they turn to a client. Once they're a client, you need to deliver on what you promised and that's all about integrity. And if you don't deliver, well, then someone is needy. But if you can deliver, then what's going to happen is that they're going to get results. What happens when client gets results? They stay with you. They tell other people. And eventually you need to scale. And if you don't do this, you're overloaded. And if you can do this, you've got freedom. This is where you start getting margin, whether that's time, money, or mission. This is where you start getting some margin. And I want to suggest after that, you've got to do something with your margin. And probably all through these scales, you need to do something with your margin. 
if you don't have a purpose where the betterment of your life is the betterment of others, well, then you're just going to simply exist. And I think we all know people in our life that have means, but they don't have meaning and therefore their life is meaningless. But if you know that you are anointed for business, you don't just work, you are anointed for this place and that there is a who and why you have an identity in purpose in Christ, that there are people that he wants you to touch, that uh, together we do things and we share, we share something very special. Then we've got purpose. Um, I was sharing with a friend the other day, um, shout out to you, Andrew Denton. But, you know, the goal of life is not at the end of our life that we spend our life picking up seashells on the beach. And I want to suggest to you when we think about happiness to think about the three Ps. Happiness doesn't come ultimately from pleasure. Happiness comes as a result of purpose, of knowing why you're here and peace, knowing who is in you. How would you go about your life if you knew, if you knew, if you knew that God is in you? That not only does he see everything, um, not only does he like you, but he loves you. And if you're thinking that life is about perfection, then if you're a mother or father, I want you to think about why you love your kids. You know, I, I cuddled my kids the other day and I told them, I said, if God gave me a magic wand and I could design the perfect daughter, they wouldn't be as good as you. If God gave me the perfect wand and could design my perfect son, it wouldn't be good as you. Now, why do I love my kids? Is it because they're perfectly behaved? No. But I love that Coco loves animals. It's really hard to go for a walk in Manly when she wants to pat every dog. It's sometimes annoying, but I love that about her. I love it that Kobe, if you ever ask Kobe, what are you believing for? You know what he says? Lego Avengers. I love it. And his idiosyncrasies and our idiosyncrasies, some of the things that we think are a bit odd are maybe some of the things that God absolutely loves. And I just want to suggest that to you. As we kind of go through our life, we think about where we believe God is taking us. And maybe we're a little bit too aware of our shortcomings. I just want to say to you, on, you know, whether you're on the call now or later, you're not a problem to fix. You've got a destiny to live. If you go through life trying to pick through your problems and where you fall short, you're always going to be a beat behind and you're never going to be fully equipped. But if you understand that God in you is enough and he has a rich destiny for you, there's no problem to fix. There's only a destiny to live. So I hope that's kind of connecting with you and understand our ultimate guide and counselor is the Holy Spirit. I want to share now three stories, three principles that I find super encouraging and I hope it is to you. Um, the first one, we, we talked about it, um, but we talk about what's in your hand. And that's an awesome principle, isn't it? What's in your hand? But that's a great question to actually ask when you think about who you are and the leadership that you have. Um, super quickly, I just want to get a very quick poll. Dan's going to put a, a poll on Zoom very quick. But the question one, I just want to get a quick read of where everyone is. If you run a business or an organization, hit the word run. If you work in an organization and fun, um, help someone else, hit the word in. If you've uh, recently found yourself out of work or reduced hours, just write, type hit the word less. As you do that, there's a second question, which is in the last 12 months, what best describes your work or influence? If you've had a significant change in the last 12 months, hit that. If it's more of the same, just hit that. So um, just Andrew as an example, you know, he's launched his book, a podcast is coming out. That's a significant change. Um, you don't have to have changed your whole business or whole career. Maybe you have, but has there been a significant change? Okay, so super quick on the poll. I'm not sure if you guys can kind of see that. Most of you have come in and um, hit the buzzer, but a lot of us um, are running business or in. And what's super interesting, the last time I spoke a year ago, 
Um, at the moment, we've got, you know, a smaller group of people that have had uh, less. Uh, whereas 12 months ago, when I asked that question, a lot more people were saying less. And so whilst we might not all get to share our story, it's very clear over the last 12 months that things have shifted for a lot of people in this group. And uh, for the person that's hit less, um, but I'm not sure who you are, but definitely want to be praying for you at the end of this call. Um, interesting, two thirds of us have said that there's a significant change and a third of us have kind of said more of the same. And um, we can end that poll now, but I believe what I'm going to share in these principles are going to be um, helpful for you in wherever you are. So principle one, what's in your hand? Um, trying to work out what's in your hand is not always easy because we all have something special, but when it's in us, we don't think it's special. We don't realize some of the things that we've got that we find easy, but for someone else is absolutely complicated. So there are functions that we do in our leadership influence, some that are high energy and high impact. And there are some things that we do that are low energy. They, they, they really drain us and they're low impact on the business. Obviously for those low energy, low impact tasks, we want to Put, give that to someone where it's their high energy and high impact. But what are the things that you do that are really magic? And some of the things are just going on and you don't even realize that they're that much of an opportunity. That's why it's hard to find, right? Because you just take for granted your God-given skills and talents. So have a think about it. What is it? Is it where, where is it in your business where it's really smooth? Um, do you find clients easy? Do a lot of people want to seek you? Do your team just, you know, do you have a way of keeping your team motivated and engaged? Are you fantastic at delivery? You know, when we went to that framework before and we talked about those emotions, you know, are we unknown or do we have an audience or do we have a connection or do we have a client? It's really good to grab a pen and go emotionally, where do you feel? You know, do you feel overloaded? Well, then probably we've got to think about scale. Are you feeling like the clients are complaining a lot? Well, they're needy, so we're not delivering. Just think about some of those emotions there that are going on there. But just have a moment of reflection to go, what do you do that's absolutely awesome? Do you engender trust quickly? Do you communicate well? A quick example of that um, is a couple. They're on the sunny coast. He's originally from Melbourne. He moved up to the sunny coast eight years ago. His original business was a concreter and he's now transferred into making pools. Last year, his revenue was $750,000. When we first spoke, it was just worn out. It's, I mean, sunny coast can get really hot and gum boots and pouring concrete and tiling can be very tough work. And he just said, I don't want any more revenue. I, I just feel like I'm working for everyone else and not for me. I just need a bit more margin. And, you know, kind of looked at some frameworks and I kind of said, look, I think we can get some good stuff here. What was in his hand? He didn't actually know. But when we dug deeper, we found this. He gets one to two inbound inquiries every single day. Now, I don't know about you and your business, but I can tell you if I had any business and I was getting one to two inbound leads going, hey, I heard you're the hot Asian, um, can you help me? And that was happening every day, I would be absolutely stoked. But here's the other thing that we dug deep. Last year, for every 100 quotes he put out, he only won 5%. So whilst he had one to two inbound leads every day, his conversion was very low at 5%. It was horrible. And uh, we kind of worked through and said, look, if you don't have a sales system, you're going to be victim of someone's buying system. And right now you're getting these inbound inquiries. You're getting a quick conversation. You're pumping out a quote. But you don't even know if you're the right pool builder for them. Not every inquiry is someone for you. Anyway, long story short, when we worked out what was precious and what was in his hand, he gets a lot of inbound leads and he's one of those just down to earth Aussie guys who really cares. Here's the story where he is today. We are mid-March 
if he doesn't win a single other job for the rest of the year, his revenue will be 1.35 million this year. His whole revenue last year was 750. It'll be 1.35. Now, here's the kicker. Okay, so his conversion rates aren't 5%. Now they're 60%. You know, the other kicker, his margins have increased more than 20%. So his prices are higher. He's making more margin. We've saved some costs. And he's going to do already, if he doesn't win another job, 1.35 mil. Now, when you hear these stories, that's why I want to break it up because there's something going on in your business where there's a shift. Incremental change is awesome. And innovative change is awesome. They are both fantastic. And sometimes we're looking for big innovations when it's going to be the little incremental change that's going to make something very significant in our business. So what's in your hand? What are the innovative and incremental changes that you can use? Hope that first one's an encouragement for you. Second one is where are you holding yourself back? We often talk about how do we motivate our team better? How do we influence better? But we often don't look at ourselves and think, where are we holding ourselves back? Um, what are the lies that you have told yourself? What are the vows that you have made a long time ago that you need to let go? I have seen people that um, with speech impediments that couldn't string a sentence together, overcome that and love talking to people. What are the things that hold you back that shouldn't hold you back? You know, and dare I say, you know, what are some of the things that the enemy just keeps He's got you just pinned down because he just drops a little lie. I know for me, there was a lie that I've been holding for some period of time. I had some people have an opportunity to just care for me and pray for me and I could let that go. And when it pops up again, I now know what's going on and I'm, I'm praying against it. We all exist in service to someone and sometimes a great motivation to get past the lies is to think about who we're serving. My second story is about a girl called Thea. Um, she's an accountant and she looks after my bookkeeping. Um, when she was young, she used to love public speaking and leadership. And at school, she got heavily bullied. Um, she's come to Australia as an immigrant. She got heavily bullied. And her reaction was to, be, to become quiet and to help everybody. She stopped being up the front and she started just being a helper. And so she used to go to all her customers and go, how can I help you? And I challenged her and I said, if your customer is a small to medium business owner, they don't want help. They want someone to own it. You know why? Because small business owners are sick of being Rome. They don't want to be all roads to all people and telling everyone what to do. They're just like, oh, if someone could just take charge of something. And when she understood that, she knew that she had to step up and leadership. And then when she knew that there was no problem to fix, but a destiny to live, then it was like, how you've been working has been awesome. But if you're going to be a queen, if you're anointed for business and you're going to be a queen, well, what got you here won't get you hit there. We're going to have to make some changes. And that was the time when we could lead a time of prayer and she could break that and go, no longer will I be the scared schoolgirl making decisions as the mature woman of God I am today. That was her breakthrough. It was significant. Now, there's many outward workings of this, but let me just tell you some things that are easy to measure. Her business grew 20x last year. Now, if you think that's a one-off fluke, already this year with no other new customers, she will 3x her customer base. She has a commitment for a phase two from another client where she's gonna 5X her customer base. How's that? Let's do 20X last year and let's do a three to 5X this year because she was holding herself back because she thought that her value was being the helper in the background because she decided to go thus far and no further. I will be the queen that God has called me to be. And the final question or the final thought I'll share with you, and it's, it's said many times from our church, but you have to believe that your best days are ahead. 
as soon as you believe your best days are behind you, well, you're just going to talk about the good old days. I had a significant moment uh, when I sold my business a couple of years ago. Can I tell you one of the emotions I had was that I was a failure? I wrote a goal down in my book and I said, I'm going to write the million dollar check. Got inspired by the Dentons and I said, one day and I don't know when, but I'm going to take you out for lunch and I'm going to show you the million dollar check. When I sold the business, I thought I'm a failure because I didn't hit the number. But I can tell you where I am today. I believe what I'm going to do, what God's going to use me is going to make my old business look tiny. It's going to look so small. And some of you may be feeling that your best days are behind you, but I'm going to tell you they're ahead. Because as soon as you believe your best days are behind you, you begin to consolidate. You begin to play safe. You begin to make decisions out of sight and management and not faith and future. Now, I want to tell you a story about a mate of mine. He rang me up one year ago. His name's Keith. He runs a fabrication shop in New Zealand. When I was asking for his numbers and he's typing them in, I thought he was using dashes for the numbers in terms of his last performance. And you know what those dashes, they weren't dashes, they were minuses. In the last two and a half years, he's lost $300,000. He's calling me up because he's about to sell the house. I've got to be honest, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what's going to happen here? In 11 months, it goes from negative 300 accumulated debt in two and a half years to $115,000 profit. Now, here's the kicker. His five-year-old niece has an incurable brain disease. Well, that's the diagnosis. What does he do? He goes to his creditors and he says, can I extend my credit terms? And I want to give some proportion of my sales to make my niece's life a little bit more comfortable. Now, I don't know about you, but all of us go, oh, yeah, of course you do that. But I want to challenge you this. You've been running your business for years and you've accumulated $300,000 in debt. You've made a profit of 115, but you're still six figures in debt. It would be very tempting to go, well, it's not us to give. Okay. The only reason he gives is because he believes he's just beginning and that his best days are ahead. I want to contrast that to someone else. They had a consultant business. It, they were doing a hunt, been running it for 11 years, doing about 150. In one year, we got that business to 750. You know what the person does? Calls me up and says, oh, I don't want to work this way anymore because I just want to consolidate. You know what? Because his limit of what he thought God can do in his life and his business was 750. This is my best. I just need to consolidate. Now, I started this call where I said, just what's the one thing that you want to write for yourself? What's the one thing that you want to write down? What's the one thing that you want to change? Because here's the thing. Nothing in life changes through thought or through encouragement or through a new understanding. It changes when we resolve to make the change. Right? I love that Deuteronomy. You decide who you're going to worship, whether the gods or the forefathers. As for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. What is that? That's resolve. That's, hey, you can do what you want, but I know what I'm resolved to do. Um, let me just grab something. I'm going to share it, actually. In 1976, this is my last thing I want to do to encourage you. 1976, a lecturer called Clyde Kilby shared a sermon. And one of the people in attendance there was someone that was a student of his. And it was a guy called John Piper. Maybe some of you have read his books, but he's a well-known theologian now. 
And his mentor wrote 10 resolutions for life. He wrote them down. The other day I printed these off in cards and I gave them out to my connect group just as an encouragement. But what are your resolutions that's going to, going to change you? I just want to, I won't share them all because we won't have all time, but let me just share a couple with you. Resolution. I shall not fall into the falsehood that this day or any other day is merely another ambiguous and plotting 24 hours, but rather a unique event filled, if I so wish, with worthy potentialities. I shall not be fool enough to suppose that trouble and pain are wholly evil parentheses in my existence, but just as likely ladders to be climbed toward moral and spiritual maturity. We don't live in a random world. The things that are going to happen to you today are not just random. It's not just good or bad, but they're opportunities. There's an opportunity that's happening. Don't fall into the falsehood. It's just another plotting 24 hours. This one. I shall not demean my own uniqueness by envy of others. I shall stop boring into myself to discover what psychological or social categories I might belong to. Mostly, I shall simply forget about myself and do my work. What are the things that you've despised that God is saying that I find so precious and unique? What are the things that is a gift and that you're in a circle of people and they're demeaning it, they don't like it, they don't understand you and they're saying that's something wrong with you, but it's not? I shall sometimes look back at the freshness of vision I had in childhood and try, at least for a little while, to be, in the words of Lewis Carroll, the child of the pure, unclouded brow and dreaming eyes of wonder. You know, so often you can just share with people and you ask, look, what made you know that God was real? And they can talk about when God spoke to them maybe as a child or what they used to see as a child. What if we could have that wonder right now? What if our best stories of God's revelation weren't yesterday but happened tomorrow? And this one, my favourite. Even if I turn out to be wrong, I shall bet my life on the assumption that this world is not idiotic, neither run by an absentee landlord, but that today, this very day, some stroke is being added to the cosmic canvas that in due course, I shall understand with joy as a stroke made by the architect who calls himself Alpha and Omega. I'm laying a bed on the bedding table. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe I'm right, but I'm believing there's an Alpha and Omega. I'm gonna have questions, but I know where I'm laying my bet. Where are you laying your bet? Life is just way too short. And there are events that happen in our life that make us realize life is too short. It's too short to keep our lives small because of old fears. It's too short to keep it small because of the envy of others. It's too small to think that this life is just physical. And it's too short not to lay a bet. Is God real to you? Or is church a community club where we sing? But if God is truly real and you believe he lives in you and he loves you and he quiets you with love and he rejoices you over you with loud singing, what would be the decisions that you make today and how would they be different? Now, with a minute or two left, I want to pray for you. And um, yeah, you can have your eyes open, your eyes closed, it doesn't matter. Holy Spirit, I want to thank you for everyone on this call. I want to thank you that they are anointed for business. This means that they are set apart. And whilst we're here virtually, in the name of Jesus, I anoint you with oil, that you are set apart 
that your life is not an accident, that it is not a mere plodding 24 hours, but there is a God of divine appointment. There is a God of divine love. And some of you are holding on to fears right now, and I want you to know that God can be trusted with it. Something that you've buried, God can be trusted with it. A vow you made when you were a kid out of hurt, God doesn't want you to hold it. He wants you to cling to a promise, not a personal vow, but a promise that he is in you. The things that have entangled us in the name of Jesus, we cut a sword through those chains that hold us back. Where our hearts are broken hearted in the name of Jesus, you bind the heart together, you bring it together for healing. You are the alpha and the mega. You are the first word and the last word. And we are involved in a story in the middle but there will be an end. And I pray for Holy Spirit anointing and divine appointment that you bless the fruit of the hands of everyone on this call. In the name of Jesus, amen. Wow, Pete, that was incredible. I can see. Oh, man, I get a little emotional, but yeah. Oh, mate, perfect. It, it was absolutely incredible. Can we just, I know, I know you're poor, I can see some positive comments but yeah definitely show your appreciation for pete mate thank you thanks uh, Pete. <laughs> thank you. So thank good. You. So and guys look if you we're running a workshop 25th 26th of march in sydney go to 100x.com.au um love to have you there um and yeah just love to have you there i'll be i'll be there so i know sam sam referachi is going to be there yeah uh, so yeah, if you if you want info on that, hit, you know you can catch that hundred x.com.au or hit me up as well. So, um, all right, well we're right on time, Pete. Thanks again, mate. Mm. Absolutely, just yeah. You're some. I think Mary Capper wrote in the chat like you're anointed for this, and you really are. So thank you, mate. That was thank you, brother. Unbelievable. Everyone, be blessed. We'll let you get on with your day. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. We'll yeah. See ya. See you in church over the weekend. Brilliant, Pete. Yes, everybody, do yourself a favor. Go to that, go to his little conference, man. It's unbelievable. As you can see from this morning, the man knows what he's talking about, and the Holy Spirit definitely speaks through him. So, mate. thanks, Pete. Awesome, Thank bro. you, brother. So good. Thank you, mate. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>